in physics in the section light we are going to see the first practical now so before we go and see how to do the practical let's be familiar with the theory background for the practical right let's understand the concept let's first go through how to do the practical and then we'll take the apparatus do the practical after doing the practical we will take all the past paper questions on this practical on this experiment whatever the past paper questions that that has come we will take them and analyze how to answer those questions right this is how we will be analyzing the experiments in your syllabus so the first first experiment in light section is verifying the laws of refraction and finding the refraction index of glass so when we say laws of refraction do you remember we studied this in theory laws of refraction did you study that you remember that there are two primary laws of refraction that we have to remember law number 1 what does it say the incident ray reflected ray and the normal to the interf interface of any two given mediums all lie in the same plane what does that mean see from one medium to another medium it may be from a highly dense medium to a less dense medium or it might be other way around however from one medium to another medium when a light ray travels there will be a refraction so at the point of incidence it it gets deviated we call it refraction it it goes into the other medium but it doesn't go in the same path it takes a deviated path we call it refracted path of the ray so the original path within the first medium is what you call incident ray when it emerges into the second medium it takes a deviated path it, it takes a different path you call it refracted path so imagine right this is medium 1 this is medium 2 let's say you get a ray traveling like this so it it reaches the surface of medium 1 like this so what will happen after this it will not continue in the same path it will get refracted depending on the density of each medium how it will get refracted will differ we studied that in theory so what we do here we draw a normal at this point a normal for this surface you draw a normal and if medium 2 is a highly dense highly dense medium then what will happen the angle reduces that means the line the line of path will get refracted towards the normal towards the normal if it is a less dense medium compared to medium 1 if medium 2 is less dense medium then with the normal the angle will increase the angle will increase which means it will take a path like this this is what you call refraction from one medium to another medium light travels it anyway penetrates it goes to the next medium but it doesn't go in the same path the path gets deviated so we call it refraction so at this point at the point of refraction or at the point of incidence we call it point of incidence where the ray comes and reaches the surface incident point at this point there are three lines line number 1 is this the incident line incident ray second is this the refracted ray refracted ray and this normal all these three have to be in the same plane usually two lines will be always on one plane however the two lines are you can you can bring them into a plane but the third line also will be on the same plane right that's what we are going to show that the 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 incident line normal and the refracted line all three will be in the same plane law number 1 law number 
the ratio of sine of the angle of incidence. Angle of incidence means what? See, this is the incident ray. This is the normal. This angle. We usually mark by I. I for incident angle. Incident angle. So, the sine of I and sine of the angle of refraction. Angle of refraction means this one. This R. I R. The sine of both of these are for refraction angle. The sine of I and sine of R are always in a constant ratio for the same medium. Huh? If you change the medium, that will differ. For the same medium, if you, if you change this I, if the angle of incidence is changed, obviously R also will change. Angle of refraction will change. But how that will change is such that sine I over sine R will remain a constant will remain a constant. We call it Snell's law, Snell's rule. This second one is known as Snell's rule, right? These two are what we call the basic laws of refraction. So in this experiment, we are going to verify whether these two laws are correct, right? So see, let's, let's see how to do it. This constant is known as the refractive index of the second medium with relative to the first medium. You know here, this is what the first medium, this is what the second medium is. So with relative to the first medium, second medium's refraction index. Refraction index of one medium has to be always with relative to another. If we don't mention with relative to another, that, that means with relative to air, we are telling the other medium's index. But usually you have to mention with relative to which medium, the other medium's index that we have to mention. So here that's why I say with relative to medium 1, medium 2's refraction index with relative to medium 1, medium 2's refraction index will be equal to this constant. Sin i over sin r will be the refractive index of medium 2 with relative to medium 1. Right. So see, sin i over sin r equals to n. n is what? The refractive index. Refractive index. So if I, if I rearrange this, look at this. Sin i over sin r equals n. So if I make sin r the subject, let's cross multiply. Sin i equals n into sin r sin r equals n comes to the other side 1 over n sin i. So we are going to draw the graph against sin r and sin i. Sin r is in the y axis, sin i is in the x axis. Why do we take sin r in the y axis? Why do we take sin i in the x axis? Independent variable is i. Because we can change the incident angle as we want. According to that, R changes. Refraction angle changes accordingly. So, R is a dependent variable. I is an independent variable. Usually, the convention in maths is that the independent variable has to be taken in the x-axis and the dependent variable has to be taken in the y-axis. Since I the angle of incidence is the independent variable. I can change it as I want. Since that is the independent variable, we take sin i in the x-axis, sin r in the y-axis. So we must get a formula y equals mx. See, 1 over n, n is a constant, n is a constant, m. We should get y equals mx formula. You know how the graph of y equals mx has to be. y equals mx has to be a straight line, the straight line starting from origin. This is what y equals mx has to be. Why? There is no intercept. mx plus c. Plus c is not there. Which means there is no intercept. Intercept is 0. Intercept is 0 means graph has to start from the origin. Right? And m is a positive value. n is positive. So if the constant m is positive, graph will be an upward graph y equals mx. 
Understood? Right. So when you draw the graph, this is how the graph has to be. So what are these points we have? See, I have marked few points here, the black color points you can see. If you want to find the refraction index, actually to, to find n, you just need one i and one r. One value of i and the respective value of r would be enough to find n. Because if you know i and r, you can say huh, sin i over sin r is n. But when we do experiments in laboratory, we do not conclude, we do not find values with one readings. Do you know why? When we do experiments, there can be always error. Human error is inevitable, it happens. So there can be small error in what we read, what we measure, how we arrange things. There can be small, small errors. So how do we rectify these errors? We repeat the experiment again and again. We repeat it again and again with different, different, different angles. Measure I and R and we put it into a graph. So when we draw the graph, if we have taken multiple readings, using the graph when I find the answer, when I find the variable that I want to find, since I have taken multiple readings, the errors would be rectified to a greater extent. Still we can't say error will be zero finally, but errors will be rectified to a greater extent. Understood? That is why we will go for graphical approach in most of the experiments in physics. We will repeat the practical again and again with multiple different different values. So here i and r, I will be changing i, different different i values will be taken, practical will be done again and again to get the respective r values and we will put it into a graph. From the graph, we will measure the gradient, m is what? Gradient. Using the gradient, n can be calculated, refractive index. Understand? That is why, see the points I have marked here, when you do the practical, might get a little bit deviated from a single line. You won't get situation like this. Look at this. Where, see all the points lying on the same line. Getting points like this in a practical, in an experiment, might be more theoretical. We won't get values like this. We won't get readings like this exactly falling on a straight line. Usually, there will be a little bit of deviation because of the human error. So, that deviation is what I have marked here. So when you get points like this, draw a line of best fit. Line of best fit means with, with those points being closer to most of the points, the line you can draw, the straight line you can draw, I will call it line of best fit. So we will draw the line of best fit. Then from the line of best fit, we will take the gradient. From the gradient, we will find n. n is what? The refractive index of the second medium compared to the first medium. This is what the practical is about. Okay. The gradient of the graph of sin i versus sin r m. The gradient. Uh, gradient y equals mx. If you get y equals mx, if you get a graph format like this, this m is what you call gradient. Gradient. So here y equals mx. m is what? 1 over n. So the gradient has to be 1 over n. m equals 1 over n. The inverse of the gradient of the graph will give the refractive index of the glass. Why? If you make n the subject of it, m goes down. n equals 1 over m. Do you know how to find the gradient of a graph? Ah, if you have a straight line, look at this. If you have a straight line, take two points on the straight line. And then get this difference. That means the y reading of this, y reading of this point. Get the difference between both y readings. We call it delta y. Delta y. The difference between the y readings of two points. Similarly, you get the x readings. And get the x readings difference also. Delta x. Gradient can be written as delta y over delta x. That means the difference in y coordinate divided by 
difference in x coordinate will give you the gradient of a straight line. That is what is m. And that m has to be equal to 1 over n. That m has to be equal to 1 over n. Look at this. m has to be 1 over n. So, n will be 1 over m. The inverse of the gradient of the graph will give the refractive index of the glass. Since we are doing this practical for glass, we are going to keep a glass block and do this experiment. The, the answer we are getting for n is the refractive index of the glass compared to what? With, with respect to the air. The second medium or the, the first medium where the incidence ray is in is air. So, compared to air or with respect to air, glasses refractive index is what we are going to find. The materials and apparatus required for this experiment are materials and apparatus. We need a rectangular glass of block. Remember, in some practicals we use prism, glass prism. In some practicals we use a mirror. In some practical we use lenses, concave lens, convex lens. Likewise, different different glass materials are used in practicals. In this practical what we use is a rectangular glass block. Meaning what? You will have a glass block in this shape. Right, this shaped glass block. Rectangular glass block will be used here. A drawing board, white paper, usually you can write that as A4 paper. Drawing pins, drawing pins means we need pins to keep the paper on the drawing board and fix it. For that we need some drawing pins. Optical pins, bit longer pins you have, uh, optical pins. Meter ruler, make sure when you, when you get this in the exams, you write it as meter ruler because in the, in the marking schemes, most of the time they, they name it as meter ruler. Sometimes we do not write it as meter ruler. If we just say ruler, you might not get the marks. The reason is we need a lengthy one to draw the lines to make the measurements and all. Sometimes even a 15 centimeter one can be called as a ruler. That might not be enough for your practicals. Right. So, to say that we need a lengthy ruler, you have to say a meter ruler, a meter ruler. These are the apparatus that we need to do this practical. Look at the method, what we are going to do. See on the paper, assume this is the paper, right? So we, we keep the paper horizontally and on the paper, we keep the glass block. This is our glass block, right? Assume that line, the, the, the incident ray comes like this and it reaches this point. So, that is our point of incidence. That means, it is a glass surface, glass air surface, the boundary. It reaches the boundary at this point, the point of incidence. So, at the point of incidence, if I draw a normal, this is my incident angle, right? Incident ray, normal incident angle. Since glass is more dense than the air, it gets deviated such that the angle with normal reduces. When it goes into more and more dense media, the angle reduces. Angle with what? Careful angle with normal, not angle with horizontal. Be careful. Angle with normal. So, always you have to draw the normal and check this. I R. So, let me mark here. This is first medium, which is going to be air. Second medium, glass. Glass block, this is glass block. So, it, it should get refracted like this. Again, it reaches a glass air surface. This time, compared to glass, air is less dense. It is less dense. If it is less dense, what should happen? The angle should increase. The angle with normal should increase. So, see, it reaches with R and it goes out. In theory, we studied if it comes in with I, Again, it should go out with I here. We can verify that with this practical. We can verify that also. So, if we consider this point, this is my I, this is my R, this is where the incident happens. So, here I can me measure this I and get sin I. I can measure this R, sin R. 
I can change this I with different different values. Accordingly, I can measure R. The respective R values can be measured. Each time I can find sin I, sin R, sin I, sin R and see whether the ratio is being constant. So how we do this practical, if we want to consider a particular I, let's say this I has to be 30 degree. One of the instances in the, in the experiment, you take I to be 30 degree. Then you draw this line. You have this normal. At 30 degree with normal, you draw a line. Then what you do? On this side, keep your eye and observe whether you can see this ray. So how do we mark the ray? How do we know the ray? Because we are not doing the experiment with laser beams. Right? We are not doing the experiment with that. We are doing with the traditional method. What is the traditional method? You fix two pins here. Since you have drawn the line, on the line, two pins vertical to the plane, uh, perpendicular to the plane, fix two pins. And when you observe from here, you must be able to see the images of these two pins. The images of those two pins. So you have to move your eye and see whether you can see both pins images. There will be one instance where both images will be aligned. Aligned means what? You will see them collinear. Collinear means what? You will see them on the same line. Right? You don't see them as two separate images. You see them one behind the other. That means you will see only one image. You will see only one pin. It will look like there is only one pin. So where is the other pin's image? It's just behind the other one. So the moment you see that two images are aligned, at that point, we will be fixing another two points, another two pins. That will show us, like if you connect the two new pins, that will give us this emergent ray. Know the names of these rays. This is the incident ray. Incident ray. And this is the emergent ray. Emergent ray. Right? From this end, from this side of the glass block, you look at the images of these two, move your line of sight to see that two images have to be collinear. The moment you see them collinear, fix two pins on this side, fix two pins on this side to be in line, to be collinear with those images. So once you finish fixing these two pins, these two pins and the images of those two pins, all four must look like a single line. You should not see them separately. Right. Once you have fixed like that, then what do you do? Remove the glass block. Draw this line. This is already drawn. Connect these two points. Extend it up to this point. So emergent ray is drawn. You have already marked this point and you now you have marked this emergent point as well. Connect these two. Connect these two. That line will be the refracted, refracted rays path. Refracted rays path. Actually, we can't observe the refracted ray. All what we know, the incident ray and the emergent ray. So we don't know how the refracted ray would have traveled within the glass block. If you are using a laser beam, you can find it. But with this arrangement of experiment, you can't find it how this refracted ray has traveled. So what do we do? We draw the incident ray. We draw the emergent ray. Whatever missing in the middle has to be the refracted ray's path. So you draw the refracted ray. Once you have, once you have drawn the refracted ray, I is ready. You can measure this with the protract, protractor. You can get the R. I is there, R is there, sin I over sin R can be taken. Repeat that multiple times. That means change the 30 degree and repeat this experiment. Maybe to draw a line, usually in physics, at least four points have to be taken. So at least with four different angles of I, repeat this experiment and get your values. Check sin I over sin R is a constant. This is what the met method is. Let's see how to write this. Let's see how to write this. This is the understanding. Now we need to know how to write this in an exam. If they ask you, write down the steps in this, how to write it. 
first point place the glass block symmetrically in the middle of white paper and place the meter ruler to be tightly aligned with the lengthy side of the glass block so there will be one side which is the maximum length highest length of the glass block so what do you do you take the a4 paper and keep the glass block like this symmetrically in the middle and then keep a meter ruler like this keep it tightly with the glass block remove the block while holding the meter ruler and draw the line xy along the paper to mark the edge of the glass block that means now what do you do remove this glass block take it out you already have the meter ruler here right hold this meter ruler tight and draw this line so that line will indicate the border of this glass block the edge of this glass block keep the glass block again on the paper such that one lengthy side is in line with xy so you have already drawn xy line here this is our xy line again go and keep the glass block so now what you have you have the paper this is line xy already drawn again keep the glass block now what do you do this time now draw the other parallel edge other parallel edge means this side in the similar method what is the meaning of similar method keep the ruler remove the glass block hold the ruler and draw the line select five points on xy in sufficient distance and draw normal line at those points what is the meaning of that i told you we are going to repeat this experiment for different different i values different different angles of incidence that's why we have taken the paper that's why we have taken the paper and to the entire length of the paper we have drawn this line now what i will do one line two line three line third line fourth line like i will be drawing different different incident lines at different angles at different angles that's what it says select five points on xy in sufficient distance and don't draw them too close it will be difficult to do the experiments so keep sufficient space in between each of them and first you draw the normal lines because always with the normal only you are going to measure the angles right so draw different different normal lines so we are going to re repeat the practical with five different angles select five points on xy in sufficient distance and draw normal lines at those points at the first point draw a line pq making 30 degree with the normal line so first we are going to take the incident angle to be 30 degree similarly in the other points draw lines marking making 40 50 60 and 70 degrees with the normal so we are going to have incident angles 30 degree 40 degree 50 degree 60 degree and 70 degree five different incident angles i am going to take now fix the paper on the drawing board using the drawing pins and fix two pins vertically on pq at significant distance now this is my border the edge that means glass yeah edge and this is my incident ray is my normal let's say that's my normal what did we say we are going to fix two pins two drawing pins to mark the incident ray when you are fixing those two pins make sure you fix them at maximum distance keep the distance as much as possible i will tell you why imagine okay i'll take two two scenarios one student has fixed two points like this or let's take it even closer like this he has fixed it too closer the other student has fixed it at some distance so once you have removed all the pins you will see the holes where the pins were fixed now i have to connect these two points or these two points this is for student number one this is for student number two to draw the lines see if i am connecting these two sometimes there can be a small error like this look at this we'll take a different color correct way of drawing that is this that means you have two holes the midpoint of those two holes have to be connected but when we are drawing that line sometimes there can be a small error a student might sometimes 
connect the points like this. Still, he is somewhat starting from the first point and he is going through the second point. So, he might think I am connecting the two dots. He is connecting the two dots, but not the right middle of those dots. He is connecting the two sides of those dots. We might not realize when we are doing the practical, we might not realize it. The two points are connected. I might think this is so. This is the correct one. This is the wrong one. Suppose if I have taken this, I have an error of this much. Error. Error. Now look at the second student who has fixed the pins at distance, much distance, much more distance. See, midpoints of both dots I am connecting. That is the correct way to draw that. Let us say he also does the same mistake. That means he is not connecting the midpoints. He is connecting the sides of those dots. So, he starts from here and draws the, connects the other end of the dot. Similar mistake the first student did. Second one is also doing it. He is not connecting the midpoints of the dots. He is connecting the sides of the dots. Now, what happens? He is also getting an error. No doubt, he also gets an error. But this is the correct one. This is the incorrect one. And look at the error. Let me say E1, E2. Error 1, error 2. What do you think? Error 2 is less than error 1. He also did the same mistake. What's the mistake? Not connecting the midpoints of the dots. Not connecting the midpoints of the dots. Still, his error is less. The reason the two points he had were at much more distance than the first student's two dots. So, this is one reason why we say the two, two pins have to be fixed at much more distance. Not only that, there is another reason. Like even when you are looking at the image and fixing it, the same similar error can happen. That means it might look like same line, but it might be a little bit deviated. Say 80 percentage is aligned, 20 percentage is not aligned. Understand? So, such error, when you fix them too close, the outcome error will be much bigger, something like this. But if you have fixed them at much more distance, even if 100 percentage aligning did not happen, the error would be minimized. I do not say error will be eliminated. Be careful. Error will not be eliminated. Error is an error. It is there. But it can be minimized. See? Therefore, this sentence is very important. Very important. Where? Now fix the paper on the drawing board using drawing pins and fix two pins vertically on PQ at significant distance. Do not fix the two pins closer. Fix them at distance. Now observe the images of A and B through the other parallel side of the glass block and move the eyes to the right and left. Ah, right and left. See, if, if this is how you have kept the glass block, you are looking from here. This is your eye. Move it this way. Not back and front. Understand? Move to the right and left. Right and left to find the instance where both images of A and B become collinear. Collinear means what? They become in the same line. They are aligned on the same line. At this instance, fix two optical pins C and D at significant distance to be collinear with the images of A and B. So again, you fix another two, two pins like I told you in, in already. Fix two pins at significant distance to be in line, to be collinear with the images you are seeing. Now remove the glass block and optical pins. Remove everything. Because once you have fixed the pins, you will have those dots. You will have those holes where the pins were fixed. Draw the line CD and extend it until X dash Y dash. What is X dash Y, y dash? We kept the glass block like this. We drew one line and another line. This is X Y. This is X dash Y dash. So, incident tree is already drawn. Here you have two dots connected. Connect them together. Right? And extend it until it reaches x dash y dash line. Let r be the point where c d and x dash, this is x dash y dash, this is c d. So, those two intersect at r. This is p. 
See, it is the emergent raised part. Emergent raised part. Draw the line QR. Oh, this is not P, this is Q, right. Draw the, draw the line QR, connect Q and R. Draw these, connect those two. Is the path of the refracted ray within the glass block. So, I told you we can't observe them directly, but this is how we are going to find it. The incident ray, the normal at Q and the refracted ray all are drawn on the same plane of the paper. Now, see, once we have done this experiment, how are we drawing the lines on the paper? You are going to draw the incident ray, normal and the refracted ray, which means all three are on the plane. Plane of what? Plane of paper. On the same paper. Paper is a plane, right? On the same plane, you are drawing all three means first law of refraction is verified that those three are on the same plane. The angle between QR and the normal at Q is refraction angle. At this point, you have drawn the normal, so you can measure I and R. Understand? So, those are the steps. If you have to explain this experiment in an exam, if you have to explain this to somebody, this is how you explain that in wordings. So, first understand the concept. Concept is important. No concept, no experiment. Understand the concept first. Then understand what apparatus we are using here. Then understand the methodology, how we are doing it. You must be able to explain that in wordings. Being able to do the experiment is one, but being able to explain that in wordings is second. In the exam, you are not going to do it and show it. You are going to write it. So how to write it is another thing. So learn that. Now we will see how this is being done. Let's go and do this practical experiment with different different incident angles. We already defined 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Let's take those incident angles, measure the R refraction angle and see whether sin i over sin r is a constant. If that is a constant, what value it is? We will see doing the practical now. Dear students, today we will see the first practical you have in light. So, in this practical what we are going to see, the first two laws that you study, first two rules that you study in light, we are going to prove with this practical. So, what are the first two rules you study? Rule number one, we say, when a ray of light goes from one medium to another medium, the line of incidence, the normal that we draw at the point of incidence and the refracted ray, all these three will be in the same plane. This is rule number one. Rule number two, the sign of incident angle and the sign of refraction angle, both will be always in a constant ratio. And this ratio will be equal to the refraction index of the medium to which the ray is going in. So, we are going to prove these two rules in this experiment. So, first we will see what are the materials and apparatus we need to do this experiment. We need a block of glass. We are going to find the refraction index of this block of glass. We need a drawing board. We will be fixing the paper on this drawing board and on that only we will be doing the experiment. We need a piece of paper. We need four drawing pins to fix this paper on the drawing board. We need optical pins. These optical pins will be used to mark the line of incidence, the refracted ray, all that will be marked with these pins. We need a pencil to draw the lines. We need a protractor to measure the angles, angle of incidence, angle of refraction, all that will be measured with this. And more importantly, we need a meter ruler. For your exams, you have to write this as meter ruler. If you, if you write this as foot ruler or just ruler, you might not get the marks. Right? What we usually use is a foot ruler, but for experiments in lab, we use a meter ruler. So, these are the materials and apparatus that will be required to do this practical. Now, we will see step by step 
how to do this practical and prove the first two rules of uh, the light section that we studied. So the first step that you have to do, keep the block of glass symmetrically in the middle of this paper and then I'm going to draw the lines of the borders of this block. But when you are drawing the borders, if you just take your pencil and draw the borders around this block, that is not the right way of doing it. You will not get marks in the exam if you write like that. So how do we draw the border? You keep the block, then take your meter ruler, keep it tight with the block like this. Keep it tight, in line with the border, keep it tight. Then hold your meter ruler, remove the block and draw the line. Actually, in the practical, we have to use the pencil, but here, for it to be clear to you, I'll be using a pen. But you have to use a pencil in a real practical that you do. After I have drawn one border, remove the meter ruler, again keep the glass block, In the similar way, you draw the other border, other parallel border of this block. Keep the meter ruler tight, hold it, remove the block and draw the line. Make sure you draw the line along the paper fully, not for the part of it, for the entire paper you have to draw it. Right. What is next? We have to draw the line of incidence. Here we are going to do a graphical method of doing this practical. That means we will not be taking one point. We will not be taking one angle of incidence. We will be taking multiple angles of incidence. And then with that we draw the graph. With the graph we are going to find the constant. Which constant? The ratio between sine of incidence angle and the sine of uh, refraction or refracted angle. So to do that, at least you need to have four different angles, incident angles and the refraction angles. To draw a graph, you need to have at least four points. So to be on the safe side, we will do this practical with five different incident angles. We will take 30, 40, 50, 60 and 70 degrees as our angle of incidence. So see how I mark the angles of incidence. First, at each point, you draw the normal because angle of incidence has to be measured from the normal, not from the horizontal. Angle of incidence and angle of refraction has to be measured from the normal. Remember that. So, at each point, first I have to draw the normal. And then, we will start the practical with 30 degree. So, as I told you, 30 degree has to be measured from the normal line. That means from the horizontal, you have to take 60 degree, 60. 60 from the horizontal, that will be 30 from the normal. So, now I have taken 30 degree incident line. Likewise, we have to take five different incident angles. So 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 is what I am planning to take. So we'll take the next one. Draw the normal again. And this time we'll take 40 degree. 40 from the normal means from the horizontal it has to be 50. Third, we will take, we have already taken 30 and 40, so we will take 50 degree. Again, we will draw the normal. Fifty from the normal means from the horizontal it has to be 40.
next point we will take 60 degree again normal with the normal 60 degree with the normal 60 means from the horizontal line it has to be 30 and one more we will take 70 draw the normal and then 70 from the normal which means 20 from horizontal. All right. So now I have got five different incidence angles. So for each of these incident angles, now we will see how the ray comes in and then how it comes out from the block of glass. So to do that, we will take this piece of paper and fix it on the drawing board. Then only I can fix the pins to mark these line of incidence. Right. So now we have taken the drawing board. We will fix the paper on the drawing board using the drawing pins that I have already shown you. Right. We will keep this block of glass in between the lines that I have already drawn. So first we will see for 30 degree angle of incidence how the ray comes in and how the ray comes out from the block. So to show the ray, the incident ray, we will take two optical pins and on the line that I have drawn, I have to fix these pins. So there is one thing you have to note when you are when you are fixing these pins, you have to fix these pins in as much distance as possible to minimize the error. If you fix them closer, the error can be high. So if you want to minimize the error, make sure you fix the pins on the same line but in as much distance as possible. So first line, first point, I'll fix it close to the block and the second point I'll fix it as far as possible from the block. Right. So I have fixed two pins. These two pins indicate my line of incidence. The incident ray is marked by this line. Now what I have to do from this end of this block, I have to see how the images of these two pins I can see from here. So when you see from this end, you can see the images of each pin separately. So you have to adjust your line of sight to see those two pins together in the same line. The images of both pins, you need to see on the same line. Once you see both on the same line, that means you have to see only a single image. You should not see both images separately. You must see them on the same line. When you see them together, fix this pin on this side to be in line with those two pins. To draw a line, I will need another pin. So fix, fix another pin also on the same line. So now the two images and the two pins have to be in the same line. So when you are fixing these two pins also, you have to ensure that they are fixed at as much distance as possible to minimize the error. Okay. So now we will measure the angle of refraction. See, I'll show you. Remove the block and then remove the pins. So as you already studied in the theory, what happens, the, the incident ray comes in, then it travels through the block and it comes out on this side. So what we have marked by these two pins on the, the, the new, newly fixed two pins, 
they show the emergent ray. So first let me draw the emergent ray. So now I have marked the line of incidence, the, the incident ray and the emergent ray. Now if I connect these two points, that will show how the line, the, the, the ray has traveled within the block of glass. So now as you can see, this is the incident ray, this is the refracted ray and this is the emergent ray. So I have to measure the angle of incidence and the refracted angle. So I have to measure these two angles. The refracted angle is here and the angle of incidence is here. So we'll use the protractor. We already know that the first line, the angle of incidence is at 30 degree. So I need to measure the refracted angle. So when we measure the refraction angle, it's 21 degree we are getting. For 30 degree incidence angle, the refraction angle we are getting is 21 degree. So this we will mark it on a piece of paper because I've, I'm going to get five different incidence angles and their refraction angles and I'm going to draw the graph. For that, let's mark all these outcomes on a piece of paper. And one more thing I have to sh I will tell you here, I told you the first rule is the line of incidence, the normal we draw at the point of incidence and the refracted ray. All these three have to be in the same plane. Now you can see all those three I have drawn on this paper. The line of incidence, the normal and the refracted ray. So all those three, since I have drawn on this paper, that explains that all those three are on the same plane. The plane is this paper. So first rule is already verified. It's proven. Now we have to prove the second one. What is the second one? Ratio between sine of incidence angle and the sine of refraction angle is a constant. For that, let's mark the first point. So we have used the angle of incidence 30 degree. and we measured the angle of refraction, it is 21 degree. Right, so now we'll see the second angle of incidence, 40 degree. All right, now we'll measure the second one, 40 degree. Again, you keep the block and fix two pins to mark the line of incidence. As I already told you, make sure you mark them at as much distance as possible. Right, so these two pins show the line of incidence. Again, like I did previously, I have to look from this end and see how the emergent line comes. Can see two images, bring them to one line. And fix this pin to be in line with those two images. Fix another pin to be in line with those images and this pin. Now we will remove the block of glass, remove the pins. And draw the emergent ray line. Right, then connect the two points that is the line of uh, the point of incident and from where the emergent ray comes out. Connect those two points to see how the refracted ray travels inside the block of glass.
again like we did previously let's measure the angle of refraction we know this 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 practical the second one we are doing for 40 degree angle of incidence for 40 degree angle of in incidence let's see how much is the angle of refraction so we get 25 degree as the angle of refraction for 40 degree angle of incidence so let's mark this on the other piece of paper where we have a table we'll mark this so i is 40 degree this time and r we have got 25 degrees you must note one thing the ratio between sin i and sin r is constant not i and r is constant so when i is increasing 10 by 10 don't expect r to increase 10 by 10 because sin is not a linear ratio so when i increases 10 by 10 r will not increase 10 by 10 the ratio is constant between sin i and sin r now we have done for 40 degree let's repeat for 50 degree and measure the angle of refraction so we will keep the block again in between the two lines the borders that we have drawn already this time we are going to do for the third one 50 degree so take two pins and fix them on the line of incidence as we already told mark them or fix them at as much distance as possible to minimize the error then what do we do check the image of these two from this end and fix two pins to be in line with the images we'll fix the pin to be in line with the two images the images and the pin should look like a single line we'll do that with another pin as well we'll remove the block remove the pins and draw the line of emergence and then connect the point of incidence and the point where the emergent line starts that will show the refracted rays path so for 50 degree now we have got the refracted rays path so now we'll measure the refraction angle we get 29 degree as the refraction angle this is for 50 degree angle of incidence we get 29 degree as the refraction angle let's write that on the other table that we have i is 50 degree and r is 29 degree let's repeat the process again for fourth angle of incidence which is 60 degree keep the glass block again this is for the fourth one which is 60 degree angle of incidence fix the two pins again check for the images from this end and fix the two pins like we fixed earlier
Let's remove the glass block. Remove the pins. And draw the emergent line. And we'll draw the path of refracted ray as well. Now we can measure the refraction angle. This is for 60 degree angle of incidence. We get 34 degree as the angle of refraction. This is for 60 degree angle of incidence. We get 34 degree as the angle of refraction. Now let's mark this on our table. This time I is 60 degree. And we got 34 degree as the angle of refraction. Now let's repeat this for 70 degree. Keep the block of glass again. Fix two pins at 70 degree line of incidence. Make sure you fix them in as much distance as possible to minimize the error. Check for the images from the other parallel end of the glass block. So fix the pin to be in line with the images. And another pin. Let's remove the block and the pins. So let's draw the path of emergent ray. Let's draw the line of refraction as well. Let's measure the angle of refraction. We get 39 degree. We get 39 degree. That is for 70 degree angle of incidence, we get 39 degree refraction angle. We'll write that on the table that we have. Now we have done for 70 degree I. So we got an R of 30. 9 degrees. All right. So now we have got five different angles of incidence and their respective angles of refraction. Now what do we have to do? We have to get the sine i and sine r for these values and draw the graph to see whether the ratio between sine i and sine r is a constant. So we'll see how the graph is going to be. So now let's see with the readings we have got how to do the calculations and how to find the constant. So these are the I and R values we have recorded from the practicals. I have used the sign table, sign table, and I've got the sign I and sign R values. That means sign 30 degree is half, you know that half 0 0.5000. Sign 40 degree is this value. You can check with the sign table. I have got these value, values from the sign table. Sign 50 degree is this, sign 60 and sign 70. Similarly, sign R value, sign 21, sign 25, sign 29, sign 34, sign 39. I got all the values. Now, what are we going to do? Remember what I told you when I started this experiment, sin r equals 1 over n sin i, y equals m x. So we are going to take these values in our x axis, these values in my y axis and draw the graph. 
okay so let's see how we can draw the graph so we have the axis here we have the graph sheet let's mark the x axis and y axis this is where i'm going to mark sin i this is where i'll take sin r sin i and sin r let's mark some points now first one we have to get the scales 0.5 to 0.9 we have so how many lines we have here 2 4 6 8 10 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25 lines are there, 25 segments are there. So we will take, we will take 4 segments as 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, it won't work, 25 segments, altogether it has to be 1, maximum value is 1, sign 0 to 1, right? So if you divide 1 divided by 25, you will get? Point zero four. We'll take like this. We'll mark this as point one, point two, point three, point four, point five, point six, point seven, point eight, point nine, one. Sign values do not exceed one. Similarly, here also. See, this is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0.6. What's the maximum value we have? We don't have anything above 0 0.7. So, we can have it at 0 0.7. That's enough. Those are the scales. It can, sign can go up to 0 0.1, uh, 1.0, but we don't have any value above 0 0.7. So, these scales are enough for us. First point. Sin i is 0.5, sin r is 0 0.3584. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is here. On this line, I will get 0 0.3584. 0 0.3 is here. 0 0.35 is here. 0 0.358. So, in these small, small sections, I will get 8. So, in 0 0.5, this is 0 0.35. 0 0.358 will be here. Right, that is the first point, point 0.5 and point 0.3584, first point. Second point, point 0.64 and point 0.42, point 0.64, point 0.6, point 0.7, point 0.65, here, point 0.64 will be somewhere here. On this line, point 0.42, go up and see where you have point 0.42, point 0.4 is here. 0.5 is here, in between you are getting 0 0.42, 0 0.42, it has to be further down, that will be 0 0.42, 0 0.42, next one, 0 0.76, or you can say 0 0.77, 0 0.77, 0 0.7 is here, 0.75 is here, 0 0.77, somewhere in the middle here, right, on that line, 0 0.48, 0 0.48, 0 0.48, close to 0 0.5, right, wait, is this point right, we have 0 0.4, 0 0.5 here, 0 0.42 has to be a little more above that. Point four two. That will be point four two. Now we have to get what? Point seven seven point four eight. Point seven seven point seven point seven five point seven seven is here. Point four eight. Point four five above that point four eight. Four eight. Next one. 
0.85.87 here. 0 0.58, 0 0.58 is here. This is 0 0.6 close to that. Right, that is 0.58. The last point, 0.9463. 94, 94, 94, 9, 95, 9, 9, 5, 9, 5 is here. 6, 3, 0.65 is here. 0.63. 0.63. This is 65. Must be just below that. That will be 0.63. This is how I am getting the points. I have to draw a line of best fit with all these points. As I told you already in the theory, you will not be able to connect all the points with a straight line because in the readings there can be error. So, we will draw the line of best fit. Line of best fit because we know it has to go through the origin. A line like this would be the line of best fit. Can you see? Three points lie on the line. Two points deviate a little bit from the line. Again, see the points I marked. One is here. The other two are here. So, these three fall on the same line. Two points, there might be a small error in the experiment and the readings, which is very common in doing the experiments. Even when you are doing, when everyone is doing, that small errors would be there. So, we draw the best line we can draw. Now, what next we have to do? We have to find the gradient of this point, of this graph. How do you get the gradient? Let's take two points on this line, two points. Maybe we will take one point somewhere here. Let's say, I'll take this point. We'll take that. And another point we'll take, maybe we can take it here. Okay. Let's take those two points for the gradient calculation. So, if you look at this point, this is 0.25. 0.25. What you get on the y-axis, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, a little above that, we can say 0 0.17. 0 0.17. Here, 0.17. And what we get here, this is 0 0.8, 0 0.9. 0 0.9, this is 0.9. And this line is 0.6, it can be 0.61. 0.61. So, I have got two points on the line. Usually, we take the points a little away from each other, but that does not matter. As long as you can measure the coordinates carefully, you can take any two points after drawing the line. Now, let us find the gradient. Gradient. M. Delta y divided by delta x. The difference between y coordinates, difference between y coordinates, 0 0.61, 0 0.17, 0 0.61, 0 0.17, 0 0.17, over, over 0 0.90, 0 0.25, 0 0.90, 0 0.25. So, here you get 61 minus 17 is 44. Here you get 65. 44 by 65 is what you are getting. That is a gradient. You know, N, what is that? Refractive index. Refractive index. N must be equal to 1 over M. 1 over M means the inverse of this. 65 by 44. 65 by 44. What is the value you are getting? 65 by 44. 1, 44. You get 210.476.18.17.34.8. Approximately 1.48, 1.48 we are getting, 1.48 we are getting as the, the refractive index of glass. 
right? So based on the experiment, the refractive index we are getting is 1.48. Understand? So this is how we use this experiment, the glass block experiment to find the refractive index and to verify the two laws of refraction. Now what we will see with this much knowledge on this experiment, we will see what questions can come on this experiment and how to answer them correctly, we will see now. All right, students. So now we will see what kind of questions can be tested from this experiment. State the laws of refraction. You all know we studied that in theory also. Rule number one, when a light ray enters from one medium, from one medium into another, into another, the incident ray, incident ray, the normal at point of incidence, and the refracted ray, refracted ray will be in the same plane. That is rule number one. Rule number two is Snell's law. Snell's law, what does it say? The ratio between sine of incident angle and sine of refraction angle will be constant. The ratio between the sine i and sine r is a constant, right? Ratio between sine of incident angle and sine of refraction angle will be constant. You can name it as Snell's law. Those two are the laws of refraction. Next. Draw the ray diagram for a ray that enters into a glass block with parallel faces at an incident angle of I and refraction angle of R. That's very simple. Let's say this is a glass block. Incident ray. Then what do you do? You draw the normal at this point. Normal. That's how the refracted ray will be. You have to put the arrows. Mark I and R. This is I. I is measured with normal. R is also measured with normal. Let's mark this as glass. Yeah. So, you know, from a less dense medium, when the light ray enter, enters into a more dense medium, it gets refracted towards the normal, towards the normal. You have to note that. So, I R, R is less than I. Can you see that? R is less because it, it has come more closer to the normal line. So, you have to draw the incident ray. You have to draw the normal. You have to draw the refracted ray. And mark I and R. Also name the mediums yeah, and glass. Next. What is the angle of deviation? So when they say angle of deviation, listen to me. Let me go back to that diagram again. To find the deviation, let me extend this line. See, this is how the extended line is. That means if the, the incident ray did not refract, if it traveled in its own path, if it travel, if it continued to travel in its original path, then this dashed line would be its path. Now it has taken a different path. So angle of deviation means this one. I can mark this as D. 
B, you know, D plus R has to be I, right? If this is I, the same two lines, the total angle here has to be I. Out of that I, R is subtracted, you get D. So D is I minus R. That's what they ask. Find the angle of deviation. Angle of deviation. I marked as D, which is I minus R. I minus R. Find a formula for the lateral displacement of the ray in terms of the thickness of glass block. Let's go back to the diagram. Let's go back to the diagram. So what will happen to this ray? Let me continue the ray. It will reach the other surface. Let's draw the normal here again. That's a normal. Again, it will emerge outside the glass. It will emerge into the air again. Right. That's how it will be. So you can see this normal and this normal are parallel to each other. This is a single straight line. So if this is R, this also has to be R. This also has to be R. So if I and R, that means from R, if it comes with an angle of incidence of I and the angle of refraction within glass is R, here you have the just reverse of it. That means from glass, it comes with an angle of R, angle of incidence is R in glass and it goes out to R. So it's just the reverse of this situation, which means here again, you will have I. I and R, if R angle is I and the angle within glass is R. Same situation we have here. Angle within glass is R. So obviously this angle has to be I. Reversible. And I can mark this as emergent ray. The arrow. Always when you draw ray diagrams, make sure you put the arrows. If the arrow is not there, you might not get the marks for the diagram. You will lose marks on the diagram. Another thing when you are drawing, you have to be careful. If this is I, this is also I, which means both are Parallel, both are parallel. The, the ray of incidence, the emergent ray, both have to be parallel. Be careful on that. Now they ask you, what is the lateral displacement? Lateral displacement means, look at this. Look at this. Now this is the original path, right? Now the ray that came like this, let me continue this line further. See, that's the original path. That's the original path. Now, the path has been shifted here. So, by how much it has got shifted, I have to draw a perpendicular between those two parallel lines. This would have been its original path, but this is the path now. So, how much it has shifted, shifted. That's what we call lateral displacement, lateral displacement. Let me draw that. If I draw a perpendicular here. Yes. Let's say this is capital D. This capital D is what they are asking. Lateral displacement. How can we find that? Let's take the thickness as T. The thickness of this glass block. Let's say this thickness is T. T. So in terms of T, I and R, I have to find this d so how do we find that how do we find that look at this if i cut if i if i continue this line if i if i extend this line that will come up to here so this is t then i can find this this side if i write cos r look at this cos r will be in this triangle if you want we can name it a B, C. In triangle A, B, C, cos R will be A, B divided by A, C. From this you get A, C equals A, B divided by cos R. A, B is what? A, B is the thickness which I took as T. T divided by cos R. T divided by cos r. Then what I can say? 
this D. D. I need to get this capital D, right? So let's write sin D. Sin D equals capital D divided by AC. Opposite side divided by hypotenuse. AC. From this you get D equals AC sin D. D equals AC sin D. For AC I can substitute U over cos. So let's write that there. D equals AC sin D. AC we have got T divided by cos R. Sin D. D is what? I minus R. So sin D means sin I minus R. Sin I minus R. I can expand this sin I minus R. Do you remember? We studied something like this. Sin a minus b can be written as sin a cos b minus cos a sin b. Sin a minus b expansion. We studied theory, theory, theory. Some trigonometric outcomes that we need to use in physics we studied already. So that is sin a minus b. Even in mechanics theory parts we studied this. Sin a minus b expansion. So let's use that expansion here. T divided by cos R sin A cos B minus cos A sin B. You can divide by cos R now. T into here cos R will be cancelled. Only sin I remains. Here you have cos I into tan R. Cos I into tan R. This is what the formula would be for the lateral deviation. What's the meaning of lateral deviation once again? This is how the incident ray came. This is how the emergent ray had been. The perpendicular distance between the two lines. Emergent ray and the incident ray. Perpendicular distance between those two is what we call lateral deviation of the light ray. We need to use a little bit of trigonometry here. What we can use? Take this triangle, take cos r because thickness is what is given t. So if you take cos r, adjacent side divided by hypotenuse. From that you can find ac. And then in this triangle again, in this triangle, if you write sin d, you can take opposite side divided by hypotenuse. Opposite side divided by hypotenuse. From that you can find d. d will be capital ac, this side into sin d. AC we have already found T over cos R. Sin D. D we already found I minus R. Here D is I minus R. Substitute that. You can get this answer. Practice this can be tested in the exam. Practice this. Next. Assuming that the required apparatus are provided to you. Explain briefly the steps of the experiment for constructing the refracted ray within the glass block. That's what we did in the experiment. What we did? What did we do? Place the glass block on a white paper. And draw its lengthy parallel. edges right we kept the meter ruler and drew the edges of the glass block then fix two optical pins on the line of incidence at significant significant gap or distance. You know why we fix them in significant distance? To minimize the error. Then observe the images of the pins from the 
opposite parallel side that means the other side opposite parallel side or parallel face and fix two pins to be collinear to be collinear with the images that means the images and the two pins all four have to be collinear remove the glass block and pins connect the two pins and extend the line until glass block see even though it, it takes a lot of space for me when you are writing with pen on your paper it doesn't take this much of space huh? since I am writing with marker since I am writing it is on the whiteboard it takes more space for me so two pins connect the two pins extend them until that reach the glass block now what do we do now what do we do connect the incidence point and the emergence point to get the refracted ray refracted rays path understand so that's what we did the experiment i did i have given in brief steps fix the uh, keep the glass block draw the lines fix two pins on the line of incidence observe the images from the other side to be collinear with those two images fix another two pins then remove the block remove the pins connect these two dots the the newly fixed two pins extend the line until it reaches the glass block so that will give us the point of emergence so you know the incidence point you know the emergence point connect them together that should give you the refracted race path explain how the snell's law is verified in the experiment using a glass block so what did we do we repeated this experiment number of times got different i and r values and then we drew a graph for sin i and sin r and we found out sin i versus sin r all, all those points are lying on the same straight line we had a little bit of deviations here and there that's because of the practical errors experiment errors apart from that they all fall on the straight line which confirms that sin i sin r ratio is constant so let's say repeat the experiment for different angles of incidence different angles of incidence and measure the angles of refraction here we can say i right angles of incidence and angles of refraction mark sin i and sin r values mark sin i and sin r values on a graph sheet and draw the graph sin i versus sin r it will be a straight line which confirms which confirms sin i over sin r is constant suppose if we got a curve here or if we did not get a straight line if we got a different pattern then sin i over sin r cannot be 
constant. But we got a straight line. We got a straight, almost a straight line. There will be a little bit of deviations here and there, but we could see a clear straight line format. That confirms sin i over sin r is constant. Right. So you have to see, we, we mark all those points on a graph sheet. Make sure you say sin i sin r. Huh? Sometimes you write it as i and r completely wrong. i and r will not have a straight line relationship. Only sin i and sin r will have a straight line relationship. If you take i and r, there is no straight line relationship. So make sure you mention, we find the sin i sin r values, mark them on a graph sheet, draw the graph. And that graph will be a straight line. I need to say straight line going through the origin. Huh? Straight line, let's say through origin. Through origin, which confirms sin i over sin r is constant. It has to be from origin, it has to be through origin. If it starts from somewhere else, then it's not proportionate. It, it doesn't confirm sin i over sin r is a constant. It has to be from origin. We need to have y equals mx format of graph. Next. Draw the shape of graph that you expect to draw. Sin i in the x-axis sin r in the y-axis. Name the axis appropriately. i is the independent variable. So, you take sin i in the x-axis, sin r in the y-axis. So, and what we expect to get here is a line through origin, straight line through origin. This is what we are expecting to get here. A student has got the following readings in the above experiment. So, i and r will be the readings. i and r will be the readings. He has calculated sin i and sin r for them. Draw the graph for these readings and find the refractive index of glass using the graph. That means I will mark these sin i, sin r points and draw the graph. Let's see sin i, sin r. We need maximum 1, right? So, see how many, how many sections we have. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25 sections are there. So, I can take, let me draw the axis first. That will be my sin i and sin r. That's my sin r. Sin i, sin r. First point is 0.5. So, let me take the scales. Let's take this as 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.91. Similarly, in the y-axis also, let's take this as 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. I think 0 0.8 is enough for us in the y-axis. Check that. We don't have anything above 0 0.8. So, sin r up to 0 0.8 is enough. First one is 0 0.5 and 0 0.34. 0 0.5, 0 0.34. 0 0.5, 0 0.34. 0 0.5, 0 0.34. You know, this is 0 0.3. This is 0 0.35, so 0 0.34 will be there. Next one, 0 0.64, 0 0.42, 0 0.6, 4, 0 0.7, 0 0.64, 0 0.42. Here, 0 0.64, 0 0.42. Right. Next, 0 0.77, 0 0.52, 0 0.77, 0 0.52, 0 0.52. 0.77.52. That will be 0 0.77.52. This is 0 0.5, 0 0.55, yes. Next is 0 0.87.57. 0 0.87, 0 0.85, 0 0.87, 0 0.57. 0 0.57 will be somewhere here. Right, that's how I am getting all the points. Let me draw the straight line now. Straight line, 
see a graph like this would be appropriate right it has to be a straight line from origin little bit of deviations is okay because in any experiment we get deviations that's fine you don't try to you know curve the graph to go through all the points you don't do that draw the line of best fit you can draw also they are asking using this find the refractive index that means sin i over sin r sin i over sin r so first let's uh, let's get the gradient gradient of this to get gradient let me take two points maybe this is one good point 0.15 and 0.1 and maybe this could be another good point right so this is 0.15 and here this is 0.75 also here 0.1 is okay and this has to be 0.5 so if we write the gradient m delta y divided by delta x delta y here it is 0 0.5 this is 0 0.1 0 0.5 minus 0 0.1 divided by delta x 0 0.8 minus 0 0.15 0 0.8 minus 0.15 that is 0.4 divided by 0.8 minus 1.5 is 6.5. Can say 40 by 6.5, 8 over 13. 8 over 13 is what we are getting here based on these values. And then this is not the refractive index because what we are getting here as uh, gradient is sin r over sin i. Whereas n it has to be sin i over sin r, right? So let's say refractive index n is 1 over m 13 divided by 8 1.5 is 12 then you have another 10 1.51 is what we are getting right 1.51 so 1.51 is the answer we are getting based on these points and the graph clear that's all they can ask in this experiment but let me show you one more point on this one more point can you remember earlier we said when the graph was like this when the when the ray diagram was like this we said the deviation is i minus r deviation is i minus r so if you look at this graph 30 degree i r 10 degree deviation it came at 30 it goes at 20 10 degree deviation just for some analysis look at this deviation here for this one 10 degree this one 15 degree this one 19 degree this one 60 minus 35 25 degree deviation understand we can get 180 degree deviation not from the glass block but we can get a prism which is a special case better if we know that case as well right connected to these when we talk about angle of deviation that is one special case we discussed using a prism we can get 180 degree deviation that means a ray that goes in this direction gets returned parallelly returned parallelly so how do we return the ray a ray travels in one direction in the same line it starts traveling in the opposite direction. How do we do that? Let me show it to you. Listen. See here. Let me keep a prism. Right. So what you see here. A prism with right angle. A right angled prism. And not only right angle. This has to be 45 degree. This has to be 45 degree. That means both these sides have to be equal. Imagine a ray arriving at this face, falling on this face, perpendicular to this face, perpendicular, which means the angle of incidence is zero. 
if angle of incidence is 0, angle of refraction is also 0. That means it will not get deviated, it will go straight. So let me draw a line like that. A ray that reached 90 degree here without any deviation, it came straight. Now if I draw the normal line here, you know this is 45 degree, here it is 90, that means this is 45 degree. That means the angle of incidence is 45 degree, angle of incidence is 45 degree. Since 45 degree angle of incidence on a glass to air surface is more than the critical angle, is more than the critical angle, what will happen? Total internal reflection will happen here. It will not get refracted outside. It will not, it will not emerge to the other side. It will be total internal refraction. 45 degree angle of incidence. So angle of reflection also has to be 45 degree. Total internal reflection. Total internal reflection. It will reach here like this. Now look. If this is 45, this has to be 45. This is 90 altogether. So on, on this side, this is 45, which means this is also 45. Why this is 90. So again, it, it falls on the other surface at 45 degree angle of incidence. Glass air surface, 45 degree angle of incidence. This is greater than the critical angle. What will happen? Total internal reflection. Total internal reflect. Draw the normal. Normal line. So this is 45 again at 45. Now what happens here, see let me mark the angles, this is 45, which means this is also 45. So if this is 45, see this is 45 already I marked, now this becomes 45, which means it reached the surface again perpendicular to the surface. If it is perpendicular, I is 0, R has to be 0. That means at this point, no refraction, no reflection, it straight away it goes. No deviation at all. So look at this. This is how the ray was coming. Got reflected. Got reflected and it goes. The ray that reached in was perpendicular to this surface. Now it goes out again perpendicular to the surface. That means these two lines are parallel to each other. These two lines are parallel to each other. Only thing is the direction is different. This is what we call 180 degree deviation. The, the ray was just turned around by 180 degrees. Understand? So under, remember, using a prism, we can get 180 degree deviation on a ray. How do we get that? First thing, prism has to have one angle, right angle. The other two have to be equal 45 degree. And then for this hypotenuse phase, on this phase, we need to get a ray at 0 degree angle of incidence. That means perpendicular to hypotenuse, we should get a ray. So that ray will get reflected twice inside the prism, reflected twice inside the prism and it will go out again in the same line or in the same parallel line but in opposite direction. Right. So this is a special case scenario where 180 degree deviation can be observed in, an, in, an, in a light ray. Clear? Right. So this is a very simple basic experiment we have done. The first experiment in, in uh, light section, in the section light in physics. Very basic experiment, not so many times tested, but it can be, it can be tested in MCQs. It can be tested in essay questions, but it is not tested much as a structure questions in, in A level, paper, advanced level paper, but you need to be thorough with the concept, experiment steps, and you know related workings. Practice all this, do this well and we will again meet up with the next practical in uh, light.